Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about using the product rule with three functions, um, really three or more functions. Um, but we're talking about finding the derivative of something that looks like f of x times g of x times h of x. Um, so let's see what that looks like. So we're going to start off with just stating the normal product rule. So the derivative of f of x times g of x. So f times g is a product, so you have to use a product rule. Uh, the way that I remember it, it is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So that's how I've always remembered it. Um, let's take a look at what this would look like if we had three functions. So if we had something like the derivative of f times g times h. So what I do on these problems is I group, I tend to group just the first two functions. So I'm going to group these together and call this the first function. So it's going to be first derivative of second plus second derivative of first. Uh, you could also group g and h. It, it doesn't matter. You can rearrange them. Um, but you have to take two of them as one um, and work on it that way. So let's see what we get. We're going to have um, first, which is f times g, um, times the derivative of the second, so h prime, and then plus second, which is h of x, times derivative of the first. But the first is f times g, so I need to use the product rule on that. So it's going to be first derivative of the second, and then plus second derivative of the first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange all of that and then just kind of like, uh, you know, show it on screen at once. So we get this. So I distributed h of x uh, in the line above, and then I kind of rearranged it. So each of them just goes in order f, g, h, but it's f times g times h prime plus f times g prime times h plus f prime times g times h. So if you look at it, we had three functions and we ended up with three products that we're summing up. So if we have, uh, this is kind of general truth, right? In the first one, we had two functions. We ended up with two products that we were summing up. And each of the products um, has one of the derivatives. So in each product, we're going to get one of the derivatives. So when you're looking at the normal product rule, there's two functions. So we're going to get two products that we're summing up. And it's uh, the first derivative of the second, and then there's the second derivative of the first. So they each have one of the derivatives. When we have three functions, uh, they each have an f, g, and h, but the prime kind of like works its way through the product. Uh, it shows up once for each function. That's going to be kind of a big deal because now we're going to do two examples. So I should kind of clarify, I never actually use this um, like generalization. Like I don't think about it. I just do the problem. So the first example that we're going to do, I'm going to say is a conventional example. So this is how I actually do these problems. And then the next example will be an unconventional example. Um, so I want to find the derivative of x cubed times e to the x times the natural log of x. So I'm assuming you know the derivative of e to the x and of the natural log of x. The derivative of e to the x, in case you don't know, is e to the x. And the derivative of natural log of x, in case you don't know, is 1 over x. Technically, x needs to be greater than 0, but I'm not going to deal with that here. So let's find the derivative. I'm going to group these together. So I'm going to say with the product rule, it's going to be the first, which is x cubed e to the x, derivative of the second. So that's going to be 1 over x plus second, which is natural log of x. So you can see the way that I do this is more like how before I came up with that like expanded form, I'm going to write the second and then times the derivative of the first. I'm just going to use the product rule on x cubed e to the x. So that's going to give me first which is x cubed, or the second is e to the x, plus second, which is e to the x. Derivative of the first is 3x squared. So I get that. Uh, what I'm going to do, this actually it factors kind of nicely. So let me first expand. So the x cubed and the 1 over x canceled. That's why it leads with an x squared. Everything else is just straight uh, distributive property. And then uh, I can take out an x squared and an e to the x from everything. So I'm going to do that. So x squared, e to the x. And then what I'm left with is uh, 1 plus x natural log of x, and then plus 3 natural log of x. All right, so that's how I would find the derivative of three functions in a product. Uh, let's take a look at a, a strange example where this is going to be really useful. So our unconventional example is we want to find the derivative of the quantity x cubed minus 5 to the 100. So um, this maybe when you look at it doesn't initially look like a product, but it is, right? Um, so what we have is we have a product 
of 100 of these x cubed minus 5s, right? So it's x cubed minus 5 times x cubed minus 5 all the way until you have 100 of them. So we can actually use that generalization we talked about. So we have 100 functions in the product, which means that uh, when we start taking the derivative, we're going to have all 100 functions in there, but the prime is going to kind of like move through each of them. So what we'll end up with is, um, so each part of the derivative that we get is going to have basically x cubed minus 5 to the 99th power, and then one of the x cubed minus 5s, it'll be its derivative. So we're going to get x cubed minus 5 to the 99th, and then also there's going to be a derivative of x cubed minus 5, right? And that's what we saw where we had f times g times h prime plus f times g prime times h plus uh, f prime times g times h. I think I said that right. Um, so it's, you know, we have 99 x cubed minus 5s and then the derivative of x cubed minus 5. And then we would have 98 of them, the derivative, and then another one. Then we would have 97, the derivative, and then another 2. So when you work that out, you always end up with 99 of the x cubed minus 5s and then one of the derivative of x cubed minus 5. So there's going to be a hundred of those products that we end up with. So when we have two functions, we get two products and add them up. Uh, when we have three functions, we get three products and we add them up. In this case, we have a hundred functions, so we're going to have a hundred products and we're going to add them up. Um, but what's nice is that all the products are the same. So when we add them up, we just get a hundred of these products. So x cubed minus 5 to the 99th, and then times the derivative of x cubed minus 5. And then if we just work this out, the derivative of x cubed minus 5, we know, is 3x squared. And then we should just simplify this. So I'm going to say the final uh, derivative of this thing, using the product rule, like a very general form of the product rule, gives me 300x squared, the quantity x cubed minus 5 to the 99th. It's like a neat application of the product rule that maybe you haven't thought of before. Uh, I thought it'd be neat to look at it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.